Hello there, my young readers, and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. We've got an amazing story for you that is not only relevant, but it is themed for the month. We are in the October month, which is Halloween month, as of the taping of this video. So guys, if you're not ready, go ahead, go get your snacks, go get your drinks, pause this video, run to the bathroom, come on back, and we'll get started. Stay tuned. The name of this story is called Happy Halloween, Fiona, by Richard Cowdery. Halloween was coming and the zoo looked spooktacular. Decorations like spider webs, ghosts, and glowing pumpkins could be found around every corner. All the animals were excited about the holiday, including Fiona. And we get to wear costumes, carve pumpkins, bob for apples, tell scary stories, and go trick-or-treating, Fiona explained to her baby brother, Fritz. Sc scary stories? Fritz asked nervously. He was not as excited as Fiona about Halloween. Let's go see what everyone else is doing to get ready for the big night said Fiona. The two hippos waved goodbye to Mama and wandered off to find their friends. Fiona and Fritz saw a green monster, a tall witch, and a bee walking toward them. Wow! Great costumes, you guys! shouted Fiona. The animals were showing off their Halloween costumes, ready for a big night of spooky good fun. As Elephant buzzed around, dressed up like a bumblebee, Fritz jumped out of the way. Oh! he cried as he got all tangled up in a big spider web hanging from the bushes. Take me home, Fiona! I want Mama! It'll be okay, Fritz. These are just pretend spider webs. Fiona said goodbye to her friends untangled her nervous little brother and headed back to Hippo Cove. The next morning, Fiona and Fritz tried on costumes Mama made for them. Wow! I'm a big jolly pumpkin! Fritz and I match! Thanks, Mama! said Fiona. Are you excited about Halloween, my little pumpkin? Uh, well, I guess so said Fritz, still feeling a little nervous. This is going to be the best Halloween ever, squealed Fiona. Later that evening, Fiona friends stopped by. Everyone was all dressed up and carrying their goodie bags. Come on, Fiona. Come on, Fritz. Time for trick-or-treating. As the little hippos followed them, some of the biggest, loudest, creepiest shrieks rang through the night air. Fritz stopped in his tracks. Did you hear that? Fritz's eyes opened wide and he began to shake. It's okay. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, I'll show you, said Fiona. Fiona and a nervous Fritz followed the noise and found Mr. Barn Owl perched in his tree. Shriek! He greeted his visitors. Happy Halloween! I'm sorry if I scared you, little one. I just wanted to remind everyone to stop by tonight while they are trick-or-treating. Sometimes they forget about me way up here. Then Barn Owl dropped some very special treats in the hippo's bags and sent them on their way. As they waddled off, Fritz started to feel a little better until he heard another blood-curdling scream. Yow! The little hippo jumped behind Fiona and Shiver, 
but, but please take me home, Fiona. There's nothing to be scared of, Fritz. That's just Charlie. Fiona led her brother over to Charlie's borough. Charlie was a screaming hairy armadillo. But mom, screamed Charlie again, very upset. If I wear a coat, no one will see my costume. It's too chilly out there, Charlie. You are wearing your coat and that's final, said a very protective Mama Amadello. Oh, happy Halloween, Fiona and Fritz. Here's a treat for you. Then Mama Amadello tossed some delicious snacks into their bags and went back into her burrow. Just as Fritz and Fiona were about to catch up with their friends, they heard a grunt and a growl echoing through the trees. A terrified Fritz dove into a nearby bush. It's okay, Fritz. There's a lot of new and scary sounds around the zoo at night. But there is nothing to be afraid of. Trust me, you've got this, Fiona told her little brother. Now, Let's go see what that was. The two hippos made their way to Tiger's habitat. There was Tiger pulling, tugging, wiggling, grunting, and growling, trying to get into his very favorite bunny costume. I don't know what happened. This fit me last year. Oh, happy Halloween, Fiona and Fitz. Can you give me a hand? Fiona and Fitz helped Tiger tug and pull at the very small and very fuzzy outfit. And suddenly, rip, the hippos looked at each other. Tiger's costume was on, but there was an enormous rip in the bottom. As he put on his floppy bunny ears, Tiger roared a big thanks and happily offered some extra treats before the two wandered off again. Walking slowly down the path, Fritz peeked in his bag. So many treats. He began to think that maybe Halloween wasn't so bad after all, when all of a sudden he heard a loud screech. And then a little whimper too. There, huddling near the base of a big spooky tree, was a young skunk. What's the matter? Fritz asked the little animal. What was that scary sound? The skunk asked as the screeching came down through the tree branches again. Fritz looked up high and pointed. In the branches above was the bat family getting ready for their night of trick-or-treating. Mother bat was scolding her oldest. Yes, you will take your brothers and sisters trick-or-treating. You can go out with your friends later. But mom, screeched Big Brother Bat, do I have to? Fritz put his leg around the little skunk. See, that's all you heard. It was the bats, the little hippo explained. There are lots of scary sounds around the zoo at night, but there aren't anything to be afraid of. Right, Fiona? That's right, the proud big sister replied. Then Fiona asked the little skunk to join them trick-or-treating. Yes, 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 squeaked the skunk. Come on, you two, let's go trick-or-treating. We've got this, said Fiona. And off they went, Fiona, Fritz, and their new little friend, to join the other animals on Halloween adventures. Later that night, back at Hippo Cove, Fiona and Fritz showed Mama all the great treats they received trick-or-treating. Fritz gave a big baby hippo yawn. I love Halloween, he said, forgetting all the scary parts. I shared some of my treats with Sloth, Mama, said Fiona. She just couldn't keep up with us. I'm glad you had fun tonight, my loves. Now it's time for bed. 
Just as the three hippos began to settle down for the night, they heard some very strange noises. Chomp, chomp, slurp, slurp, burp. There, tucked away in the corner, was little skunk eating every last treat in his goodie bag. Burr. Fritz giggled. He must have followed us home. Happy Halloween, my little trick-or-treaters. Sleep tight. And they did. Well, that ends our story. And like I said in the beginning, I thought this was an awesome story. And I didn't just love the story. I loved the visual of this story. This was a tale of two siblings. And I say that because each one had a different expectation for their Halloween night. Yep, they sure did. And I get what you're saying. I get the tale of two siblings. This could have easily been a tale of Fiona and her Halloween night. Or it could have been a tale of Fritz and his Halloween night. And they would have been two drastically, totally different stories had they not been together. You are exactly right. And the thing about it was Fiona was just, she was fully committed to her Halloween night. She was looking forward to it. And that was just how she was. Unfortunately, her brother Fritz was and understandably he was younger so he would have felt more intimidated by his surroundings and everything and understand that Halloween night it is built to be scary <laughs> it, it is, is built it to is. scare you <laughs> your friends will try to scare you so Fritz was on on alert for that and being young he was very he very knew susceptible what was coming. to being scared yeah he knew what was coming his anticipation was he was going to be scared and he was just, you know, I don't know. He he was like he was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Every moment that he was out, he was waiting for the shoe to drop. That's why he hollered for his sister to take him home, take him to his mama. But what Fiona did, and I love how she did it, is she kept being very, very calm about it. And she kept giving reason to him. She was like, Fritz. We're in the zoo. You're going to have noises in the zoo. But, yep. you know, the back of my mind, I was thinking, you're an animal, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, too? I, uh, oh, my God. Me, too. I'm me, kind too. I'm falling short of your logic other than you're an animal, too. You make animal noises. Fritz should be aware. All of you guys are animals. You're going to make your animal noises. And you know what? I was thinking that exact same thing. And what we have to do as storytellers and story readers that a lot of children's stories are going to have animals and these animals are going to have human characteristics in them. We have to submit suspend our logic mind and accept that these animals are for the sake of the story. They're kids and we have to refer to them as kids with kid characteristics. So Fritz was a little kid. He's, he was almost like maybe, um, I'm trying to place an age on him. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe a seven or eight yeah. year old. Yeah, I'll go with nervous, that. And his sister probably was maybe 10, 11, 12, something I'll go with like that. 12, 12. So I ha that's how I have to suspend my mind to get the story to really be powerful and, and actually give me what the story was meant to do. And I, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. That's why I had to make my mind shut down when he was always jumping at the noises that animals make. The owl. I mean, you're in the zoo. You live in the zoo. You should know your zoo friends. But then I was like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I have to suspend that mm -hmm. and think in terms of... This is a little child, right. and he's hearing right. these noises at night, knowing that this is Halloween and that it was geared to scare you. So he was already anticipating it, and he was he was ready for the anticipation of the scare. And you know what I really love is how he was able to enjoy uh, the night 
once he was able to let in his, his sister's comfort and hearing what she said in a calm way, he actually was able to start enjoying it. And in, in fact, he found somebody who was as scared as he was. Mm -hmm. And he was able to take that calm, that caring that his sister had been given to him all night long. And he was able to pay it forward. Right, with right, woman yeah. And able to give that one some comfort. So I think he really did well. And the story <laughs> did really well towards the end. Well, you know, little darling, what I'm surprised you haven't already said, and I'll say it for you, this ended up being a story that was an all's, all's well, well that, that ends, ends well. Well. <laughs> well, little darling, I enjoyed this so much, and you know that's my time, and I will have to see everybody here in the next video. Bye! Well, there goes Miss Triangel. As you can tell, we enjoyed this story so much. And we hope you guys enjoyed this story as well. And we hope you got a few takeaways out of it as well. So until next time, my young readers, I am your little darling narrator out.